Welcome to Wind Chime Story Time. I'm David. And I'm Reese. Today we are reading The Wishing Well Collection 2 The Grumpy Troll by Liana Wall. Let's join the fairies enjoying the fall season. Enchantry Wood was filled with many hidden fascinations and charm. Every day, the princess fairies seemed to find a new flower, animal, or area of the forest that they had never seen. The fairies loved adventure and finding new things in their kingdom. They loved the way that every day brought a brand new adventure and new moments they would remember. One misty autumn afternoon, as the bronze leaves fell from the oak trees, Tinsel was busy in the willow tree bedroom writing down all her thoughts ready for the winter celebrations. She wrote in her beloved little leaf notebook. Tinsel loved Christmas and the wonderful warm feeling of love it brings everyone in Enchant Dream and in the human world. After all, she is the fairy princess that possesses the power of endless love. She was making notes of her plans to make this Christmas extra special. She wanted to decorate all the homes of the creatures who lived in Enchant Dream and Lights and also have the Evermore tree decorated with style and flair for all to see. This was the main tree of Enchant Dream and was an important place for all who lived there. As Tinsel rode away, Glow came skipping in to see her. What are you writing? Asked Glow. Just winter plans, Glow. I have so many ideas that you can help with. Glow, being the fairy of dreams, jumped for joy at being asked to help. Glow sat down beside Tinsel, and together they planned and wrote down their thoughts. After a little time, they needed a break and a stretch, so they decided to go for a flight to see where they could place all these new lights and decorations for Enchant Dream. They flew past the caterpillar's dressing room. He was the one who had made the clothes for the fairies, and decided they would love the blue lights around their home. Then they flew to the gnomes, who they knew would adore the multicolored lights. Together, Tinsel and Glow had so many wonderful ideas, full of love, perfect for this time of year and the festivities just around the corner. Glow began to fly further on than was usual for the fairies in Enchant Dream. She passed the River of Wonders and zoomed past the pixies, out beyond the rabbit burrows. Glow, slow down, called Tinsel. There is more to see and decorate, said Glow as she continued flying, swaying left to right with such happiness. Tinsel flew behind her sister, a little uneasy that they had flown past their normal territory in Enchant Dream, but also a little curious as to what could be beyond their comfort zone. As they flew, the land of Enchant Dream and the flowers and trees and beautiful nature faded into a rocky land. The trees thinned out and the grass no longer grew any flowers. Glow suddenly stopped. Tinsel, why are we in such a rocky land? Asked Glow. I am not sure, said Tinsel. There are still greenery and trees, but not as much as back where we came from. All of a sudden, a mighty roar came from one of the rocky boulders below. It sounded as though it had come from underneath a little bridge that crossed the small stream. This made Tinsel and Glow jump with fright, and they held each other tightly. What was that? said Glow. As she spoke, another roar filled the air. Tinsel wanted to comfort her younger sister, so she kissed Glow on the cheek and said calmly, Stay right here, Glow. Tinsel then spread her wings and bravely flew down to the boulder below them, underneath the little bridge. She peeped around the rock edge and looked inside. It was a dark cave. It was very gloomy, with water droplets dripping down the inside from the bridge above. Slowly, she tiptoed into the cave entrance to hear a groan and a mumbling noise coming from deep inside. As worried as she was, she closed her eyes, thought of love, spread her wings and started to fly, lighting the way inside of the dark cave. In the dimness, she could see a large round creature. This dark shape was lying on its back with a big round tummy in the air, heavy breathing and groaning. Excuse me, said Tinsel in a delicate, nervous voice. There was no reply. Hello? She continued tiptoeing closer. 
Still no reply from the creature. I don't mean to bother you, she said lightly. Well, you are bothering me, said the dark shape in a loud, deep, mighty tone. Why are you under my bridge? Tinsel jumped in fright as the creature raised up from its back on the floor. Tinsel was a little fearful as the being stood up. He was very large and extremely tall, with wisps of hair on top of his head. His teeth dropped over his lip. He wore a brown cloth round his waist with the grumpiest look on his face. He folded his arms and looked at Tinsel with crossness. What do you want? He muttered. No one crosses my bridge. My name is Tinsel, she said politely with a nervous smile. My sister Glow and I were exploring in Chan Dream, and we heard you sounding very gloomy, and we wanted to see if all was okay down here. Well, I am gloomy, he grumbled. You can go away now. There's no one passes my bridge. Us trolls don't like anything or anyone. This startled Tinsel. What do you mean? She gasped. Why do you not like anything or anyone? Also, can I say that your bridge over this stream is lovely? It is dazzling with the vines of the trees entwined. The land of Enchandream is welcoming to all and loved by everyone. Not me, he said as he started to lay back down on the floor. This is my bridge, and I get to say who can see it and who crosses it. Oh, don't be like that, said Tinsel with a giggle. At least tell me your name, so I can be your friend. I don't want to be friends, he whined. Are you going to go away now and leave me alone? Please tell me your name, said Tinsel sweetly. Volzar, now go away, he moaned. Volzar. That's a lovely name, said Tinsel as she started to fly back out of the dark cave. Tinsel flew over to the oak tree where Glow was resting and making daisy chains. What was inside? said Glow excitedly. You will never guess what I found, Glow, replied Tinsel. I found a troll named Volzar. He was very grumpy and bad-tempered and lives in a little dark cave under the bridge that crosses the stream by the rock land. I don't think he has any friends or anything to love, Glow, but we can be his friends. Another mighty roar arose out of the cave. Tinsel and Glow nodded in agreement, smiled, spread their wings, and flew back to the willow tree to seek the other princesses. As they arrived, Sparkle, Glitter, and Twinkle were with Selina in a circle, making wands out of the willow tree branches so that they could cast more of their fairy wishing magic in one go to make it wider and greater for the land. Selina wanted her fairies to have wands. As now their powers were in place, they could use more of the magic glitter instead of just what they could carry in their little dress pouches and pockets. The wands were brown and looked just like twigs, so that they could be disguised and never recognized as the fairy princess's magical wands. Tinsel and Glow sat down in the circle with them. I see you've met Falzar, said Selina, with a grin, looking out the corner of her eye at both of them. How did you know? said Glow. I hear everything, said Selina, which made the fairy smile and giggle together. Who is Falzar? asked Sparkle. He is an Enchandream troll who lives in the Rockland, said Selina. We do not know why, but he does not like anyone and is very grouchy all the time. He likes to be alone and protects the vine tree bridge that crosses the stream through the rocks. Yes, said Tinsel. Today he did not want me to be his friend. This upset the other fairies, and they looked at each other in shock that no one would want to be friends in Enchant Dream. I have an idea, said Twinkle as she stood up and raised her toes in eagerness. Why don't we take a wand to the troll and help him make and find his joy and happiness? That's a wonderful idea, said Selina, looking with adoration at Twinkle. 
The five fairy princesses stood up and each took a willow tree wand from the middle of the circle that they were making them in, skipped to the edge of the willow tree, and flew out into Enchant Dream. Tinsel and Glow led the way as they flew back to where the flowers disappeared and the trees were not so green. They could see the rock land beneath them. Down here, said Tinsel as she led her sisters to the troll's cave. What is that upsetting sound? said Glitter as another mighty groan came from the rocks below. That's Bolzar, said Tinsel, shrugging her shoulders with a sigh of sorrow. Sparkle, Glitter, Twinkle, and Glow all held each other tightly, as Tinsel was very confident making her way back down to the troll's cave. Come on, said Tinsel as she saw that her sisters were huddling together behind her. They all held hands and followed Tinsel into the dark cave. Bolzar, said Tinsel delicately. Hooray, he muttered in reply. My sisters and I have a present for you. She explained. I don't want a present. Don't you fairies just leave us trolls alone? It is something you may like, said Glitter, using all her courageous power. Bolzer rolled over from his back and onto his big tummy. This is something to eat. I don't want it, he said miserably. It is even better, said Tinsel as she and the fairies all removed the wands from the pockets in their dresses and held them high in the sky. Amazingly, all the wands started to glow with each unique fairy color. Red for tinsel, purple for sparkle, turquoise for glitter, silver for twinkle, gold for glow. Falzar's eyes opened wide to see his once dark and gloomy cave shine with the most fascinating colors he had ever seen. What are you doing to my peaceful cave? he groaned. We want to help you find happiness and joy, Volzar. We know it is there inside of you. You just need to achieve it. Oh, I don't need that, he said, his eyes still fixed on the wand's glorious colors. We think this will help, said Glow. The fairies all then formed a circle, placed their wands high in the cave, and sang together. Joy and cheerfulness are the keys. With the laughter and fun, you will see. Find the ones who will bring you fun. Then your happiness forever has begun. Just then, Little Glow's wand dropped to the floor with a delicate twinkle. Bang, and her gold glitter spilled across the entire cave. Volzar stood up, his face widened. His crooked teeth appeared as he opened his mouth. He held his big tummy and let out the biggest laugh ever heard by the fairies. Volzar could not stop laughing. The fairies looked at each other in astonishment and all began to laugh with him too. After a long time of laughing in the cave, Volzar was tired and sat down. The fairies all came closer and hopped upon his knees. Volzar looked at the fairies one by one. Thank you for bringing me joy. I have never known what happiness and laughter was like. That's the present we wanted to give you, Volzar. Your very own magic wand. Tinsel took out a spare wand and handed it to Volzar. The power of joy is a wonderful thing, she said. And as she did, the wand lit up with a beautiful warm orange glow. It lights up if I hold it too, asked Volzar in amazement. Yes, said Twinkle, the fairy of truth. When you feel true happiness and joy inside, your wand will be the most powerful asset to you. And it can light my cave and bridge, he said, cuddling it tightly. Of course, said Glow. Just remember your happy times, your happy moments and happy places, said Sparkle. The magic will do the rest. Thank you, said Volzar as he shone his magic glowing wand around his shining cave, and it glistened in the little stream under the bridge that he cared for so much. His face lit up with a smile like a vision no words could explain. As the fairies all looked, they didn't notice Selina was at the entrance of the cave, peeping round the rock edge, watching her daughters with their wands. Will you come back and see me? 
said Falzar. You can walk over my bridge. Of course, said Tinsel. Falzar smiled at the fairies as he continued to stare in amazement at his cave bursting with lights and magic. The fairies all waved goodbye and flew back to the palace willow tree. They were filled with laughter and delight. Selina was already waiting there for them. She called to her daughters. My dear princesses, you have given Valzar the happiness and Chan dream is all about. You are the wonders and magic of this kingdom. You show that just by being kind and caring, joy can be brought to anyone, even Valzar. The fairies all looked at each other and smiled. Then they all skipped merrily off to bed to have some honey soup and tuck themselves in. What a lovely day said Tinsel as she sat up and stretched her arms ready to sleep. It was, said Twinkle. The fairies all then whispered goodnight as they rested their heads knowing they had made someone happy in Enchant Dream. Selina peeped round to see her princesses fast asleep and smiled. She flew back to her willow tree bed, overflowing with adoration for her daughters and delighted that our kingdom was to sleep peacefully, filled with happiness, cheer, and joy. Thanks for listening to Wind Chime Story Time. Have a pleasant day. And the next adventure's on the way. Bye. Bye.